find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Ready to roll with you, talking about some indie wrestling and uh, talking with some great guys in the indie, indie wrestling. All walks of them, the wrestlers in the ring and the people working around it. I'm one of the people around it. Uh, my bump car's full, and I only took like three. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Doing video here in the Pittsburgh area with uh, Sorgatron Media, International Wrestling Cartel, uh, Res- uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and a bunch of other stuff. With me is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. He is Eamon Payton. And Eamon to please on the Twitter down in San Antonio. Why, hello, Sorg. I'm so glad to be back again this week. <laughs> again. So I, enthused as I, representing I, as an I, announcer. <laughs> Keeping the theme, keeping the theme with the show. It's very, it's enthusiasm, but it's a, it's a, it's a calm enthusiasm. I, I've, you know, still got the spring break, obviously, uh, effects, as you can see from my face, but I'm still ready to talk about indie wrestling. So I'm excited. It's got the spring break sunburn <laughs> fever right now. Well, anyways, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. You can check us out over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, one of the many, many shows that are, we do over there, talking about all aspects of pro wrestling, from the midweek wars to the raw wrap-ups to the uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show itself, the Mayhem Manias, and, and, and the great articles over there as well. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, for this and other shows you can also drop us a line any of your thoughts on indie wrestling anybody we should talk to or if any announced guests you have any questions for at 412-206-WMS0 good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com is the email, email address and you can join us around about 11 p.m. eastern time at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com we do have a chat room hi Sammy in the chat room how you doing uh i don't know if that's a real name or not it seems to assign them uh but anyways uh let's get into uh our fine fine guest for this week amen yes as as uh as i believe you mentioned before the show this isn't a guest from my neck of the woods and i guess that i've gotten the pleasure to work with a great deal now uh with inspire pro wrestling uh sort of uh in the behind the scenes the in uh, uh Sorg, I think you've put it before, like like in the shadows of, of the wrestling production, and, and it's very, but a very important part of the wrestling production. Uh, uh, he is the current videographer for Inspire Pro Wrestling, and I'm very glad to have him on the show. Cat ears and all, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ray Zombie. Ray, how are you this evening? Hey, man, how are you? Uh, I am a videographer, you know, video guy, as on Twitter is what you put me as. I like it, <laughs> it makes me happy. Uh, yeah, we we keep it very very cut and dry. Video guy is the appropriate term, I guess. We go at right at, at eleven thirty. Hey. That's what you get from me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but uh, uh, like I said, uh, very happy to have you on the show to talk about some of the stuff you're doing in the wrestling world. Uh, but I guess the first thing that we always kind of start with uh, is an icebreaker, I guess, of sorts. Uh, everybody uh, who we have on the show gets into wrestling one way or the other. Uh, so we want to know what's your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? The first memory of watching professional wrestling, I was a Mexican child in a Mexican apartment and I had no cable, but I have a buddy, his name is Richie. Uh, he invited me over to his house one day and I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. And he had cable and, uh, it was Monday night. And the first memory I have of, uh, watching wrestling, cause I've seen it before. My mom used to watch uh AAA and cmll on uh, like telemundo or something like that so i remember watching before but like my first like vivid memory of uh watching any type of wrestling is watching um val venus getting his penis cut off in the dark <laughs> and the whole choppy choppy your pee pee skit and like i don't know like that instantly got me hooked and then i saw the good father like coming out and like just beating up on somebody and i was like yo wrestling's fun and I understand it better because it's in English, even though English is my second language. But, you know, but uh, first memory, just Val Venus' penis. <laughs> Definitely a kickstart. Did you, I, I guess, sort of the stuff, did you understand, like, I guess that, like you said that you've kind of seen, like, the stuff in AAA and stuff like that as well before. But, like, did you realize, like, it was kind of, like, I guess the same thing, obviously, like, with the with the over-the-top kind of the segments and stuff like that in the Attitude Era? Well, like, uh I don't know, like Mexican wrestling, dude. Wrestling in in Mexico is way the hell different than Mexican Mexican. Ah, then sorry, than uh, wrestling in the United States. 
because uh, lucha libre is is a sport. It's not entertainment. It's uh, it's a legitimate like thing that people go watch and they talk about. It's like the NFL would be here. So, uh, you know, th- those people that are regarded as like a different type of celebrity, like they're really important. And a lot of things going on. Uh, watching it in the United States as a kid, like I, you know, obviously, like it's whole, the whole thing is real to me. Everything would be real to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, you just you, I never really laughed or or. or thought that wrestling was fun. I always thought it was more of a sport. So when Attitude Era came around, and that's when I started watching, uh, I remember watching Kane for the first time, just like coming out, I'm like, dude, this guy scares me, and it's awesome, and I love him, and he's my favorite wrestler because of that. So uh, it was, it's a lot different, but I, I much prefer, prefer the, uh, the American wrestling over anything else. Awesome. Very cool. <laughs> uh, to kind of go into, obviously, you're jumping to working in sort of the wrestling business. Uh, uh, how did you kind of go about, like, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, you've done some work in the past, I believe, for uh, uh, DDT out of Japan, even. Mm-hmm. Uh, so was that kind of your first sort of anything in in wrestling, or or was that, uh, or did anything kind of occur beforehand? Um, I've always been into videos. I've, I've made videos since I was a kid, and uh, I have a degree in history for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, mm-hmm. The first person to graduate from my family uh, from college in america so my mom's like yo hey this is awesome i'm gonna send you to japan and i was like holy crap like you're actually gonna take me to japan mom so she sends me to japan on a on a plane trip there uh and i wanted to make a video i've been you know making like little videos every now and then uh but while i was in japan i was like yo like you know a lot of of people will get this opportunity let me make something out of it let me find something uh so i went to ribeye the steakhouse that's really famous uh, I went there, saw a bunch of pictures on wrestling on the wall. I was like, yo, like, this is pretty cool. Before my trip uh, to Japan, I did research some, uh, like, I guess, infamous or famous uh, places that are uh, associated with wrestling. One of them being this bar called uh, Dropkick Bar. And so uh, that, was in, that was in the Shibuya district. And I, just, I remember having, like, the hardest freaking time to find it because this bar, it's not labeled. You, you have to find an elevator and at this elevator, you, you, you look at this elevator and I have a video of it. So you can kind of see like the elevator itself. The, this is like my first like actual like production with wrestling. Um, but I walk up, I see the elevator and like right above on the eighth floor, it's like this little like black bar. It says DDT. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds like something I've heard of before. Cause I remember the blow of doll. Mm. So I was like, all right, cool. Let's go in there. Uh, I walk inside, go to the eighth floor. And like, mind you, dude, I'm a, I'm, I'm a tall dude. I'm a big dude. I got long hair. I got a beard. Uh, I'm, I don't look white. Um, so I walk in, man. And there's like, it's, it's a small bar. The bar itself had about five seats. And then there was like a common area where you can sit down around a couch. Uh, everything was black. The bar was black. The only thing lit up was the, the alcohol itself. And there was a TV on the, on the corner that was, they're showing, um, they're showing, uh, ROH actually. <laughs> And uh, I just walk in there. I'm like, yo, like, hey, guys. And everybody just kind of stops. It's like the whole, like, record scratcher and looks at you. <laughs> and I'm just like, hey, hey what's up? And uh, over the night, um, I met Ryu. Ryu's uh, one of the guests. Not guests. He's a timekeeper slash uh, announcer for DDT. So I met Ryu. And in, like, really broken English and everything and really bl- broken Japanese, we communicated with each other. Each other. I also met um, Akito. And uh, he's one of the wrestlers there and uh, just kind of occurred to me. I was like, yo, like, yo, these guys are awesome. We're having a good time. Uh, let me try and get an interview out of this. So I take out my little recorder. My camera was already like half dead from all the footage I've been shooting in Japan. Uh, I'm like, yo, like, let's do an interview. And they're like, in Japanese? I'm like, hell yeah, in Japanese, let's do it. So I pop out, uh, I pop out my, rec- my recorder, do a little interview. Later on, I get invited to DDT to uh just check it out you know can't really shoot anything because it is a an actual event that they do Mm. um but it was my first foray into shooting anything that was wrestling related and i wasn't sure that i was going to do it i wasn't expecting that i was going to do it but i ended up doing it i got a lot of cool stuff out of it a lot of good memories good friends and it's the first time i ever thought about like doing any type of production for wrestling Awesome. This and, is great. Hey, hold on. Eamon, Eamon. At the time, uh, was that, 
Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I, 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 I'm pulling up the video and actually playing it for the for the feed up here. Uh, if you guys are joining us on video, um, it, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. So, so uh, yeah, it, it's it, it just looks like a bar for those on on audio, it, and it, it it just and and it just chilling there. It, it, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, it's a uh, it's crazy. That's just Japan. Everything is hidden. Everything you have to look for yourself. And I remember like trying to ask local people, like, yo, like. Uh, pro resto, pro resto. And they would they would point at me too. This freaking uh, this building, and like that's a that's where they would hold the shows. And mm-hmm. uh, I walked in, like it was like uh, an under construction arena. Like it was like it was on the twelfth floor of this like weird building. You go into the elevator, you go to the top. That's that's the the arena. Wow. And it was like under construction. I wasn't supposed to go in there yet. They kind of threw me out because I didn't know where I was going. And then that was like before I got into actual like the DDT bar. I went to the DDT arena by accident. <laughs> which is a, called like face face off or face kick I can't, I can't remember the name of the place dropkick bar <laughs> no dropkick bar is the bar and then it's like out. their arena okay. studio place thing is called like kick off or face off or something this is great nice um but yeah as i was saying like going to like the style of videos that you were doing at the time were they what, what would you kind of define like the the stuff that you were kind of into like video producing wise um documentary stuff because it's the easiest and cheapest thing you can make if you do any type of documentary work, it's just like just real time, no setup, nothing. Just try and go out there and like make interesting footage happen. Um, I, you know, literally zero budget. Uh, got a, uh, uh, the first camera my mom got after my dog died, I think. She was like, yo, I got to make him happy. Let me buy him a camera. She bought me a camera. Like, <laughs> literally, thank you, mom, for everything you've ever made, like everything you've ever done for me. Cause like, she's the reason I get to do this type of stuff. Um, but she got me this like really weird camera. I took that with me. Uh, and it's just, it's just documentary works. The easiest thing to get to do and the easiest thing to produce. The only, the hardest parts is editing stuff together. Cause it's, you know, I'm all self-taught about everything. So yeah. Awesome. And, and I would say you can kind of see that a lot in the work you've been doing for us at Inspire. Cause it's very, uh, obviously not strictly documentary, but it has that sort of, artistic kind of style about things where you know, certain shots you obtain really do get a, a vibe of the entire event more than just like like wrestling so to speak so would you say you kind of implement some of your past stuff doing like the documentary style stuff into wrestling yeah completely because um so like before i moved to austin the whole point in austin is like yo i want to make a i want to make it i want to make um movies and i want people to watch it and then i want to like one day make a living off of it uh so before I came to Austin, it, it kind of struck me. I was like, yo, like, I like video stuff. I like wrestling. Why not try and, like, work at a at an indie wrestling place? That might work out. So, actually, I think it was, like, in, uh, in July or so of last year, I sent Max an email through the website, through Inspire Pro. And I was like, yo, hey, uh, I do video stuff. I'm going to Austin I'm moving there in August. You are you in need of anybody? And it just so happens that at that time, like, yeah, Inspire Pro needed a video guy. And um they like I sent them, you know, I sent them uh, my type of my quote unquote reel, I guess. But most of it's like, yo, like, look, I I did wrestling stuff, look in Japan, look at what I did. And Max was like, Yeah, dude, I really like the documentary feel to it. If you could bring that into the into Inspire Pro, that'd be awesome. And I guess. It looks documentary-ish. I don't know. I'm not really good at distinguishing things. Uh, <laughs> people people watch it and they like it and they're like, "Yo, it looks documentary." So I mean, yeah, I guess it's documentary feel. Yeah, I would say t- just like certain shots. Definitely, when it comes to like, uh, I notice like shots you'll get of the crowd and stuff like that, or um, uh, just some really cool angles and stuff like that that you take about it. That's very different than the stuff you sort of normally see, mm-hmm. uh, uh, on, at least on an independent <clears throat> wrestling level. Um, so yeah, definitely, and and uh, you've been working with us for a few months now. Uh, uh, what's it been like, sort of getting into the groove of becoming, you know, working for a, I guess a regular pro- wrestling promotion now? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, in I guess video wise, um, honestly, dude, anything video wise from the time I've been to Austin, doing the pro wrestling stuff, uh, doing stuff with Chris True and Johnny Mundo, mm-hmm. doing stuff with just um, people that look at my stuff and they say, yeah, let's pay money to like video our stuff. Uh, it's all overwhelming because I never went to school for it. I've just always done it. And it's just kind of weird to be put into the professional title of videographer, editor, director, anything like that. 
because half the time, like I swear to you, uh, I'm 24. So I guess like I'm learning about being an adult, but a lot of people don't know what they're doing and I'm one of them. <laughs> and it just, you know, <laughs> it's just, you gotta, you gotta work. And then hopefully your work is good enough. So my time here, I'm just, you know, I'm really grateful for my, for my opportunities I've been given. And my whole goal is just like, Hey, like produce good stuff so that you can show that you are worth it. And that they did not make a mistake. Totally. Absolutely. Um, going, as you mentioned, the stuff you've done with, uh, uh Chris Chu and Johnny Mundo, let's touch on that a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, last month, Johnny Mundo <coughs> came down to, uh, inspire for wrestling to help promote some of the Lucha Underground stuff happening at South by Southwest. And you actually got to do a bit more stuff with him and, uh, Chris true for, uh, some of the stuff true was doing for, uh, his, uh, true to the game, uh, uh stuff. I know you did, a. Uh, a uh, sit-down interview with Johnny and mm-hmm. and uh, them going out in the streets of Austin to learn the art of parkour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it? What was it like, kind of doing that? And especially somebody like Johnny, who's like been in WWE and and is a re- pretty recognizable name. What was it like right. you know, working on that? Um, ever since I met Kiss, I've never been starstruck. The, the <laughs> day I met Gene Simmons and he hugged me, I like I was almost in tears. Uh, that was in 2008. Since then, I've literally learned because in 2012 he kind of like. Gene Simmons, I met him again, and he was like, oh, yeah, you better love me. And I'm like, Gene, no, Gene, you're just a person. And like, from, <laughs> from that day on, I'm just like, yo, like, these dudes are just dudes. They're just people that, you know, they just have recognizable faces. They do recognizable stuff, incredible stuff. Um, when it goes to Johnny Mundo, uh, I've worked with him in about five productions now. Um, the first being the podcast. The second being some promo shots that he did that I that I did with him. Uh, uh, the comedy show that he actually did with the new movement, um, more promo stuff at Lucha Underground that I got to fortunately go to, and here here in Austin, the Austin Warfare. Um, working with him, it's professional, it's fun. He's a down earth guy. Uh, I don't know, like it's just he's just uh, just like anybody else. It's just kind of weird that I used to watch him when I was like fifteen. You know, he was on TV mm-hmm. and. Uh, I guess like, you know, 15, 16 year old be would say like, holy crap, Ray, like you're hanging out with people and stars and stuff. But it's just a it's just another dude who is phenomenal what he does and really grateful, really down to earth guy. So he's a it's a it's been a fun experience with him. Awesome. Absolutely. Uh, and you can go check those out online, by the way, uh, uh, and go and go see them because they're really great. They're really, really, really uh, insightful and also really funny stuff. Uh, but uh, going back to some of the stuff you're doing with us at Inspire. Uh, uh, you've been producing, uh, 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 I would, I want to say like four or five of our shows as of late since you joined on, onto us, maybe a little bit more. Sometime, uh, August was the first time I went. September was the first show I shot, which was Battle Wars. Hmm. Um, before that I was just kind of doing like, I, I just kind of like showed up and said, yeah, I do video stuff and just kind of got shots to the crowd and whatever. And, um, Max was like, Hey, we need somebody to edit these things. Uh, you said you were an editor. And I said, yeah, I am. So I edited everything, got it out in like three weeks or so. And there were, everybody was kind of, it was weird because everybody's kind of astonished that I got it out. In really weeks. great. Honestly, really great turnaround. Um, that's weird. I don't, I don't know. Cause I feel like it, the, the, the show was shot three weeks ago. I'm like, it's, you know, it, it should be out by now. Mm. Uh, same thing with the, the current show that I'm, that I'm done editing. It's just been a hectic South by Southwest week. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was my first uh, foray into Inspire Pro, was just editing that one show. They were like, "Yeah, that was cool. Can you do the video stuff next time?" And I said, "Yeah, I'll do. I'll do the video stuff." And it just kind of took off from there. So, uh, was it? I guess was it what you expected? I guess is the best way to phrase it. Uh, uh, was there anything you were surprised by? I guess in a sense, when it came to actually like shooting a full sort of wrestling show as opposed to like more of the documentary stuff. Um, zero expectations because I've never done it before. So just kind of went in there and just hope I didn't suck uh <laughs> i can tell you though just you know watching behind the scenes stuff with wrestlers there it kind of broke me a little bit i got a little bit sad because i it's still real to me damn it like right. I, am, <laughs> I am the biggest freaking mark in the world dude uh no doubt and just you know seeing dudes kind of like we're supposed to hate each other like kind of hang out i'm like no please don't <laughs> same thing with john again i'll go back to lucha underground because I, i've watched a couple of lucha underground shows now and uh, I got to go backstage and like all the wrestlers were just kind of hanging out and they had their masks off. And I'm like, no, I shouldn't be allowed to look yeah. at this. I should be away. <laughs> I should be out in the crowd. So um, I don't know. It, it kind of um, kind of solidified the reality of wrestling. Um, 
I really see the work that goes into it, the um, all the stuff that they that these guys go through just to you know do what they love. I I feel like I am part of the of the crew in the sense that everybody's there to pay their dues and to go on to the next level. Uh, you know, this is a, a good thing that I say I do. I work with people. I I direct wrestlers. You know, uh, I'm also there paying my dues so that one day hopefully I will be something better than what I am today. Definitely. And, and going to that point, I guess, of, of kind of uh, uh, sort of losing that sense of, 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 you know, disbelief of wrestling. Uh, I know me and Swerve have, I think, talked about this in the past about how when we've gotten into like the business, I guess you could say, and like how we can, we kind of can't watch wrestling now without sort of seeing things that we wouldn't have seen before if we, we were just a fan like Sorg. I, th- I think it was mentioned like how will watch WWE and notice some of the stuff they're doing production wise and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you get that sense now when, when you watch wrestling uh, uh, that you kind of pick up on things that you wouldn't have normally had picked up on, I guess, so to say? Um, I'm in the same boat as the rest of the world when they watch WWE and we all hate the zooming to, to <laughs> make action appear more hectic and chaotic. Um, but, uh, you know, these guys have been doing it for years that's their job. That's what they make money off of. It's their professionals. And I, I'm not one to be able to say, yo, like I, I really just like this way. It should have been done because, you know, I'm, I'm just a dude in Austin who, uh, who's got a couple of cameras. These guys are professionals. Uh, but you know, obviously you can't critique them. You can't say this could have been done better, but I feel that sometimes I'm just not in the same spot. I can't like say, yo, like this thing should have been done differently. The only mm-hmm. time I've ever felt that like, like intensely post uh, working at Inspire Pro, excuse me, is um during the Royal Rumble, where uh, mm. like the actual Royal Rumble itself, half the action was like in the ring, and the other half was like the camera looking at Roman Reigns on the floor. And yeah. The whole time, like, there's got to be a call. Somebody, somebody in the back says, "No, stop looking at the Royal Rumble," which is the you know the name of the show, the pay per view, everything, and look at Roman Reigns on the floor. Uh, that's the one time that I like just remember just saying like, like crap, dude, whoever's, whoever's running the show production wise is not getting what needs to be got. Yeah, no, definitely. And I, and especially like the, like, like you mentioned that whole idea of like them like zooming in and stuff like that on bumps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like that's something I never noticed until someone pointed it out to me. And then now I watch it and I'll pick up on it and realize, Oh, that kind of like hurts, like kind of gives you a headache after a while. Like yeah. the amount of times they do it. But also like, uh, like I understand why it's done. It, you you are essentially seeing two athletes in the ring doing a dance, and uh, you have to intensify the dance. If when I'm editing Inspire Pro, you know I'm, I'm literally just like I'm watching. I have about thirty hours of footage, so I'm watching like a lot of stuff. I like repeatedly at the same time all mm-hmm. this other stuff, and then every now and then like something happens in the ring that really looks off or whatever. You have to do something camera wise editing wise to make it seem like it's a bigger impact and the whole point for me i think is to do it in a way that you can't notice it's happening mm-hmm. but you know with WWE, they're they're zooming in and out to achieve the effect of chaos so i, I get why it's being done i understand why it's being done i'm not a fan of it no definitely and i i think like you kind of mentioned that it's a it's something that somebody does and like specifically says to do it stylistically. So I think that's, that's definitely uh, very interesting. Um, uh, I guess going into uh, um, uh, the, the stuff you've been producing for us at Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, is there anything uh, about being, I guess, sort of filming a whole match that you've noticed that, that any, anything that you did, uh, you expected or didn't expect when it comes to actually like being up close and personal towards the action in that kind of way? My arm hurts a lot. <laughs> I get very, very tired holding the camera up. There is a lot of times where I have to just put the camera down because I can't hold it up for so long. I'm sitting there for three hours with my hand above my shoulder in a very like weird, like weird angle. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> that that I, I noticed that uh, every now and then, like just to further like like realize that this is like quote unquote fake. I hear spots and I see spots. Like I see their mouths like moving and stuff. And uh, it's just stuff that, I, like, editing-wise, I cut away from so that you don't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I I, it's a, I see the choreography a lot more up close than I would anywhere else. Um, 
And then, you know, I, I managed to avoid it, but a lot of the people I work with, they all get spit on. <laughs> that's, that's not fun. So uh, we have oh. a lot. We have a a, a very uh, interesting <laughs> amount of spitters, I would say, on the entire pro wrestling. Uh, I can't. Uh, okay, first, Andy Dalton, stop spitting at the at the crowd because you're gonna hit one of us. <laughs> and, um, I, can't, I can't remember who it was, but he was like a literal like like the last show. I can't remember what, what the who it was. But every thirty seconds, he was like spewing out like ten gallons of spit from his mouth. He was a human <laughs> water fountain. And, uh, it's just weird. That's you get you get really up close with these guys. Mm-hmm. Definitely, mm-hmm. they're very uh, they're very uh, uh, in, they're very interesting bodily functions. I'll, I'll, yeah. uh, I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, uh, I guess uh, we'll dive into some of the regular questions that we ask uh, everyone on the show. Um, uh, the first one we have is, uh, and, and this one I definitely want to hear from, from you, uh, particular, uh, what are you watching currently wrestling wise? Uh, usually when we ask this to wrestlers, it's like, what are you watching for studying purposes? But is there anything, uh, kind of wrestling wise, like from that kind of end, even that you kind of have your eyes on? I know you mentioned Lucha Underground. Mm-hmm. Um, are there any others? Um, obviously the WWE, that thing's my bread and butter. Love that thing. Even though like it doesn't love me back sometimes. <laughs> um, I, I like I like to watch Japanese wrestling. I don't know what's happening. I don't understand it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's cool. Like I, like it's weird. I'm I love wrestling. I I don't favor to watch wrestling over the skits, over the over the backstage stuff. I like that a lot more. Well, like the Attitude Era, like there was like maybe an hour of like not, not sorry, not an hour. It's like maybe like thirty minutes of wrestling in a two hour show. Mm-hmm. I love that. Like I love watching stories play out more than I like watching matches play out i uh, that was weird um aside from um from that i think that he lucha underground i used to watch tna when it was on mondays because i like to flip back back and forth and like create the wcw WWE feel <laughs> um obviously i'll watch triple a every now and then uh i watch it a lot more back in dallas with my mom than i do here now Obviously, like, uh, kind of because like, I don't have cable anymore. Cut mm-hmm. the cable. Um, but on YouTube, if there's like some like big match that everybody's talking about, I'll go watch it. Uh, Wrestle Kingdom, I watch that again. You know, more Japan stuff. But that's uh, that's mostly what I watch. That a some some TNA, mostly Lucha Underground, uh, AAA. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, uh, and kind of the big question that we we like to ask all of our guests. Uh, since we're a show based around uh, the art of indie wrestling uh, and, and feel free to take it in many different directions because a lot of people do but uh, what is in your opinion the best thing about indie wrestling and the worst thing about indie wrestling the best thing about indie wrestling would have to be the feeling of closeness that fans have with the wrestlers uh, that's something you don't get from a lot of other sports if you like NFL, if you like baseball whatever, you're always you're always away from the what's happening on the field or on the pitch or anything, you know. Um, I'll harp back to like Mexico stuff because you know in Mexico soccer is the biggest thing in the world there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the difference is that the soccer players are a lot more accessible. They're a lot easier to like talk to and and be friends with than uh, any other type of celebrity that you could find. When you do uh, indie wrestling, you are watching the future of wrestling in front of you. And they are so, you know, one day you're going to be like, yo, I see this guy on TV. I used to give him pats on the back. We used to like hug and stuff after he won a match at this certain place. The that's that's probably the most important thing about indie wrestling is that you you have like this this close knit uh, interaction and love with the fans that you wouldn't get anywhere else. And. You know, they're they're there to put on put on a show. Generally, the wrestling's a little bit better because they're trying to make a name for themselves so every every night that they are performing they're performing to their best capabilities so that somebody somewhere can see them do that and say that they want them in their in their promotion or whatever so you're just watching excellent performances and you are very connected to it and then the worst thing about indie wrestling and i'll say this from from the from the production mindset is that I, I hate watching it because it looks like crap. Mm. Uh, if I'm if you're not there alive, then you're watching it from this like really crappy handy cam, and it just doesn't look good, man. Uh, a lot 
lot of a lot of the worst parts about the indie wrestling has to be the promotions themselves. They the way they present themselves, not like the people personally, but like the websites that you see, the the videos that you that you watch, the the podcasts they may put out. All of it is kind of low quality and it's hard to look at. The thing that drew me to Inspire Pro a lot is the fact that the website is beautiful. Like mm-hmm. I, I went to inspirepro.com and inspireprowrestling.com and I was like, holy crap, like it looks it looks like a good real promotion. Like everything looks beautiful. I went to the to the photos, the roster page, and the roster page blew me away. Cause I've never seen anything so beautifully, beautifully done. Uh, and then I went to the videos and I was like, Oh no, like the videos are not, they're not up to par to everything else I'm looking at. <laughs> Some of our early stuff definitely did. <laughs> yeah. Man. Really hard. A lot of it, like the hard cam, man, when those early video stuff, like the hard cam would like look straight into like the second rope. And mm. it just, I don't know. There's just like little stuff that you, that you, that you pick up on when you do, when you do video stuff that you see a lot more. Um, but the, the video side, it just, it kind of hurt. And if you're not a bigger promotion like Chikara or ROH or whatever, you don't have the resources to have a better production team. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that's, that's what I'm trying to like step up. You know, I want the video quality to be as the same as the rest of what is fire pro has. And then just indie wrestling wise like that, that needs to be a lot better because that's how the wrestlers are seen. That's how, you know, if somebody, if somebody wants to watch somebody in, in Austin and they live in Washington, they can't go up to a show. So they have to buy the, the DVD or the, or the VOD or whatever. Yeah. And since that's the thing that they're watching, it's all they're exposed to. It has to be good. And indie wrestling just doesn't, doesn't have good production quality. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, me and Sorg have had a lot of discussions on past shows about like the idea of like kind of what you go to, like about like presentation and how a company kind of markets themselves, not just, I think a lot of people assume that indie, when it, like people think of indie wrestling, they think of all oh, the fact that all this wrestling is really good. Mm-hmm. But the companies that I think market themselves and sort of brand themselves in certain ways, like yeah. kind of like you're going, like, like you're getting at, uh, seem to be more successful than others, I guess is the best yeah. way to put it. A lot of the stuff is that uh, for indie wrestling, the wrestlers are there to help themselves a lot. They have to, they have to, because they have to, they have to break out. But in doing so, a lot of wrestlers just kind of forget that they are under this house. Uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling being one of them, you know. Um, everybody who works on the production side, the you know uh, Max Biss, everybody. That that writes the show or whatever they they put a lot of time a lot of a lot of their heart into the show, and to them and to me because you know I'm I'm helping make it. Uh, it's it's a lot more than just a, a place that wrestlers can go wrestle at. It's like our our little our little WWE. You know, it's our little production thing. We have to have to hopefully like break break apart the the idea the thought that the wrestlers are just at a wrestle it's that mm-hmm. the it's that the promotion in total is good the commentary is good the the uh wrestling itself is good the promotion the promoters they all treat everybody with respect everything's like professional everything's done well this isn't this isn't just some like crappy indie wrestling place that you just go watch people wrestle at it's a it's a good place to hang out in yeah you know, that's- it, it, it's uh it, if if like Inspire Pro had more money, then it could get more production stuff done, and uh, you would have things closer to Chikara and ROH. You know, th- those are also indie promotions, but they're thought of less as that and more of at, more of as a good place to work for or work mm-hmm. in. You know, Inspire Pro is getting to that. I think it's it's. Um, I've been here long enough. You know, it's been the, the place has been going on for three years, and I've only been here for seven months or so. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like one day it can be a thing where wrestlers are like, yo, like I would like to work there because it's, it's good. It's a good place. It's not just a place to work. With. Totally. And, and, um, uh, I also want to mention like, the, I think a lot of times with indie wrestling, like you mentioned the idea that not a lot of companies have necessarily the most resources, so to speak. But I think the best thing is to have people, I think like you and your mentality of to make the most of what you have, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you say that that's the kind of the way to go about things? Uh, completely, man. You, 
like uh, for me, like you, you, I, I have to make it look better than what I can than what I have because it's it's important to make something look as professional as good as you can. Uh, it's just it's just important. I little things like I have the uh, I bought some lights and I use them for backstage stuff. The lights are a lot more important than what people would think. So you kind of. You kind of just have to make sure that everything is as good as you can make it because otherwise it's going to look like crap and always going to watch it. Yeah. And then also just to further yourself, you know, like wrestlers are there. They're going to, they're wrestling to be better. I am shooting to be better. I want somebody to look at what I do and say, this guy is awesome or this guy did a good job or whatever. I have to have him do this thing. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's Inspire Pro and it's, and it's me, like the Ray Zombie the brand itself it's gotta be like yo this guy can do good work wait let's give him money to do other work totally yeah and i think that's the best mentality i feel <laughs> to have in a in an environment like that so i definitely agree um well thank you very much ray for coming on and talking with us and, Dude, and hey, thank you man and sharing your stories um if people want to find some more of the stuff that you've done or if they want to check you out on social media uh where can people find you um my hub, RayZombie.com. You can find my Twitter, which is at the Ray Zombie, and my Facebook, which is the Ray Zombie. Uh, yeah, RayZombie.com. I do a lot of different stuff. Wrestling is a is a big part of it now, but uh, I do a lot of little videos about whatever's going on. It's a it's fun. I'm trying to trying to vary what I do so that people will like it. Awesome, absolutely. So definitely go check them out uh, because, like I mentioned before producing some really good stuff for us and, and obviously in general uh, across the board. So uh, once again, thank you, Ray, for coming on and talking with us. Uh, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And during that commercial break, uh, our good folks in the Pittsburgh area, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, uh, go check out uh, a cool little event that's uh, for a very good cause. Uh, we'll be right back. Hey guys, it's Matt Light, Pittsburgh Magazine's 2014 and 2015 winner, best comedian, and cancer survivor. Come check me out Friday, April 8th for a night of stories, laughter, barjitsu beer pong, and prizes that will be sure to make this a night to remember. I'll be performing with some of the best comedians in the Steel City. Portions of the proceeds benefit the Testicular Cancer Awareness Foundation. Special thank you to our event partners, FN Vodka, Ultra Premium Vodka, Pittsburgh Improv, Pittsburgh's premier comedy club, Sorgatron Media, podcast, video production, and creative media, Pittsburgh Podcast Network, for Pittsburgh by Pittsburgh, River's Edge Radio Network, Pittsburgh's voice for local music. Comedians for Cancer, Friday, April 8th at Dave & Buster's in the Waterfront, the only place to eat, drink, play, watch sports, and laugh all under one roof. Get those tickets, folks. Go to barjitsu.com or showclicks.com and search Comedians for Cancer. Okay, well, uh, when I first got my iPad, I, my iPod, God, back in 08, something like that, maybe maybe a little bit earlier or later than that or earlier, um, I was watching an ESPN show, and I heard them talk about something that they have a podcast. And I'm like, what the hell is a podcast? So I looked up what podcasting was, and I'm like, oh, it's just radio shows that you can download and listen to anytime. I'm like, I bet there's some about wrestling. So I literally just typed wrestling podcast into iTunes. And um, I, there, I downloaded like at least, God, five or six that I just like grabbed them and started listening to all the episodes that they have available. And I think the Mayhem Show only had three. So I'm like, oh, okay, these guys just started. I can, I can get in on the ground floor. And I listened to the first episode, and the first thing I heard them talk about was Lita's tits. I'm like... <laughs> I think I'm going to like this show. I think I'm going to enjoy this show. Because I was at that pay-per-view the night before. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, these, these guys are all current. This is going to be great. And I have not stopped listening since. And we're back. It's the Indie Mayhem Show. And please uh, check out our friends in, in that great show if you are here in the Pittsburgh area. And a lot of you guys do listen uh, locally here 
like especially from uh, the wrestling side of things. Uh, so uh, we're uh, going to touch on some more stuff around indie wrestling. Eamon, of course, hanging with me. And, of course, hey, Ray Zombie's hanging out, too. Cat ears hey, and all. Uh, we're, we're having a great – we almost had another podcast in between on the break. Uh, so about <laughs> video production. So that may need, need to happen at some point. Uh, but anyways, um, Eamon, some interesting news. We did touch base on, on Wrestling Mayhem Show because it is kind of crossing the gap here. But something interesting is happening in Volve. Definitely, because uh, we—I remember—we didn't know whether to talk about this on the main show or on the it's indie show. It's getting so confusing. It's it's the the cross promotional stuff is very interesting. But uh, uh, for many people that have known that Evolve Wrestling, uh, the promotion booked by Gabe Sapolsky, uh, has a bit of a relationship now with WWE. Uh, uh, it's been very apparent. Triple H has appeared at their events, uh, at least peeking through curtains. Uh, uh, William Regal has been obviously in front of the camera a bit more. Um, and at this, uh, their past weekend of events, um, they, uh, made the announcement, specifically William Regal made the announcement, uh, that the qualifying matches in the global cruiserweight series that's going to be coming up this summer, uh, will be happening in Evolve. The qualifying matches, I think they made, they were sure to clarify that the American, uh, qualifying matches will be in Evolve. So who knows what mm-hmm. else we're going to be getting elsewhere. Um, and, and we did, did a bit of a discussion on this on the regular wrestling mayhem show, but. Uh, over the idea of this sort of idea that more people are kind of recognizing independent wrestlers and independent wrestling as a thing, particularly WWE, which is something that a decade or so ago would have been unheard of, really. Um, I, I, I think it's extremely interesting. I, I just remember like thinking back to, I think it was the build-up to wrest- whenever, oh, whenever WrestleMania Mickey Wark was a part of. And they were showing clips of the wrestler that had like Ring of Honor banners in the background. And we were like, oh, my God, they're showing Ring of Honor banners. Like, this is so crazy. Like, and now, like, the fact that this is kind of branched over uh, uh, is very interesting. Uh, uh, Ray, I want to get your thoughts on it. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on kind of this collaboration, I guess you could say, with Evolve and WWE? Dude, it's crazy. Uh, it's, it's all just like, you know, like we were talking about indie stuff, man. It's just people watch your things and they like it. Uh, I don't know what they do. He was like, yo, like we like Evolve, so let's work with them. Uh, it's just another breeding ground for more future wrestlers. Um, I don't know, man. That's cool. I, uh, I'm really happy for everybody who's involved in that. It's got to be it's gotta be crazy to be a dude working in Evolve, and then one day it's like, yo, we're affiliated with WWE now. Like, it's yeah. gotta be, that's got to be that's got to be insane. So I'm really looking forward to what happens and what comes out of that. And and we kind of compared it, I think, a lot of the main wrestling mayhem show, uh, and we brought up mention to a lot of like, like W. It's known now that WWE and ECW had a bit of a working relationship when they were sort of together, but I think obviously now in the age of social media and, and stuff like that, where everything's more known, we're actually seeing it kind of play out almost, um, which I think is extremely interesting. Um, uh, we also kind of had a discussion on the show about how. Um, the whole idea, uh, I guess the best way to describe the, the discussion was like the whole idea if the if the distinction of WWE wrestler and indie wrestler is going to sort of dissipate. You know, are these, there's still people I think that are considered to be a part of WWE that are considered like the indie guys, like the Finn Mallards and the Samoa Joes and the Sami Zayn's and how long, I guess, until they that kind of fades away and everyone's just kind of considered like, Oh, we're all in this wrestling thing. Uh, there, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, there's a huge difference between being a wrestler and being a WWE superstar. Like, they're not all the same thing because when you are in, in indie wrestling, you're just you're putting on performance in indie wrestling. You're just you're wrestling to the people there, or whatever. But when you're in WWE, you're you're not wrestling for the people there. Like they, the people, the twenty thousand people that chant back in arena are not there. That's not like the main priority. the the main The main priority is whoever's watching on TV. Mm-hmm. So the way they wrestle, the way they, the, everything they do, like everything that the that the wrestlers do in the WWE, they do it because in the sense that somebody else is watching them from the fourth wall. So you know, all all the tags are made a specific way. All the moves are made a specific way. The the pinning, like just the pinning itself, you will. The pinning has to be done in a specific way so the camera can pick it up in a different way. Yeah. So, like when you hear, you know, wrestling is just wrestling all all in the same. Like you, you know, the the basic thing is there. It's it's all kind of the same. You're all putting on performance in the ring. But being a superstar, you have to. You're you're wrestling for a bigger audience. There's a 
there's this cool thing that like Finn Balor, I think it was, it's on the network. And like, I think it's like when he was uh, first showing up, uh, Triple H was with him and he was like walking through him through, he was walking through Finn Balor's entrance. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, yo, you have to do this because the camera's going to be here and you have to do blah, 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 whatever. It's a really, really cool looking insight to see like how they have to change all their natural instincts to fit what the WWE wants. So there's a, there's never going to be a, an encompassing umbrella that says wrestling is wrestling. It's going to always be like, these are wrestlers and then these are superstars because they, they wrestle differently. It's just a different genre. Yeah. And I think that's the thing people mention a lot is like, when, when somebody gets signed, I guess, they're like, oh, they'll probably take time. Because everyone t- used to talk about how you had to transition to the WWE ring and how it's shaped differently than a, than a regular wrestling ring, how that was the big transition. But like you said, it kind of goes more to that. It's how you play to the camera, how you, you know, little stuff like you mentioned, like how people, you know, if you're going to pin someone, look at the hard camera sort of stuff. Like yeah. Kind of stuff like that. And, and it's stuff people don't normally think about. Um yeah, I, I, I guess that's the big differential, I, I think, in terms of indie wrestling and, and wrestling so, and, and WWE, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it hasn't been all about, are you a good wrestler? It's about, are you a good wrestler? Or, or in general, are you a good adapter to the WWE way in the long run, too? Mm-hmm. So It's like, are you good at performing? Mm-hmm. Are you good at being an actor as opposed to being a good wrestler? Exactly. Because, you know, you Stone Cold, The Rock, these dudes, they're not technical wrestlers, but... Mm-hmm. They got to the point where they are now because they're great performers. They're great characters. They know how to play up to what they're needed to play up to. Like um, the biggest person in Inspire Pro that can do that is Ricky Starks. Like mm-hmm. that dude is like his charisma is way the hell up here. And uh, you know he's already been on NXT. People are watching him. You know he's he's gonna get there one day because he he knows how to he knows how to adapt. He knows how to be charismatic. He knows how to be a character as opposed to a wrestler. Definitely, I think. The ability to sort of work a crowd and, and not only just work the crowd around you, but the crowd watching you is, is, mm-hmm. is a huge thing there. Um, so, yeah, definitely that's uh, very interesting stuff to come from Evolve. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on it. It definitely makes you kind of keep an eye on Evolve if you want to see who, I guess, is going to be moving on to the actual uh, Global Cruiserweight series. So I think it will be very interesting to see what's to come uh, uh, from that. Um, I also want to point out, mention to uh, – um, uh, a company that uh, obviously is pretty well known, which is Chapara Pro Wrestling. Uh, they had uh, their past weekend of events this past weekend. That's kind of an oxymoron, but whatever. Um, and uh, they had actually a pretty good stuff on the event. Now, we've mentioned before uh, uh, topics about like intergender wrestling and the stuff of women advancing in professional wrestling. And they actually had, uh, pulled off something really cool uh, uh, at their show, which which was uh, Princess Kimberly, who's the current Chicago Pro Grand Champion, uh, who won the belt back in December. Uh, she, you know, definitely a big trailblazer as far as a woman holding the top belt in a promotion. Um, uh, uh, very cool to see. And uh, uh, she had a defense of the championship uh, this past weekend against Heidi Loveless, and I believe it is the first time that two women uh, uh, on any level have contended for the major championship of, of a promotion in the main event. Wow. Uh, uh, in a belt that uh, can also be held by, held by men and is traditionally held by men, um, which I think is extremely cool. And it's cool to see the Chikara kind of groundbreaking and, and trailblazing that kind of aspect. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on, on that, either of you two? Um, do you think that's something we'll definitely be seeing more often? Uh, 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 is it something people are willing to sort of accept now that a woman – could be the top face of a promotion. I I think uh, yeah, like with a lot of things, you could say eh, only in Chikara, right? Uh, because they uh, Chikara is its own world. Chikara is its own rules where you can do that, where you can where, where they birds broke the mold of intergender. I don't see I, I don't see this trickling upwards to WWE by any means. Um, yeah. But I can see anybody else that tries to do this is going to be an also ran. You know, um, and and I can't see many others in a significant place doing it. If that makes sense. I think sense. as long as, as long as, you, like, not wrestlers, competitors from different organizations. I will just point out Ronda Rousey. Uh, right. If she can, if more people like her, more women like her can show up and say that they can do better than the men, then you'll see it in wrestling. Like, you know, last year it was like, yo, hey, Stephanie McMahon, I'm 
I'm Ronda Rousey and I'm going to break your arm. Uh, it only happened because Ronda Rousey is like, she's just the top everything in the UFC. Mm-hmm. She broke the mold and you just have to have that. You know, if it, somebody's going to break the mold and then one day, you know, NXT already's doing it. They already have a, uh, they had the Bailey and Sasha in, the, in their takeover Brooklyn event. It's just it, it'll happen eventually, I think. And it's also got to have people to break the mold. Right, right. And also, as far as intergender, like, you know, Jakar is doing it with and a lot of these other promotions are doing it. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Bless you. Sorry. Bless you, my child. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm allergic to intergender wrestling, apparently. Um, <laughs> um, my point was, and these are like not China type people that they're putting in intergender matches, right? Yeah. Typically, sometimes smaller guys, like I'm thinking of Veda Scott and Gregory Iron. Gregory Iron is not a big guy, right? Yeah. Um, and that, that definitely makes them more believable. I don't know if the handicap helps too and everything. Um, but uh, but no, I, I can, you know, it has to be done in the right way. And we talked about what happened when you have big, giant, jacked up guys being up little girls like, like uh, 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 Darcy, uh, Darcy Dixon that we talked to after the the, the uh, National Pro Wrestling Day a few years ago. Um, no, I, I this is a this is a long time. It's good to see kind of inroads like this. And if anybody's going to start, it's going to be Chikara. Again, they have their own rules. So yeah, I'm looking forward. Also looking forward because King of Trios tickets go on sale uh, next week, and I'm kind of thinking about making a run for that. So <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, so but it is Pokemon themed. <laughs> oh man then yes and double yes <laughs> yes absolutely but I, I i actually really do agree with race point i think it's gonna have to take some some person from outside of wrestling making enough waves in some form of sport or some aspect to kind of push that because they all they almost tried to dip their foot in it i think with the whole when they started the whole divas revolution stuff where they mentioned all the groundbreaking stuff women were doing at the time in sports and um i think that was very much them kind of dipping their toe into recognizing uh, okay like recognizing that oh we need to make our women as credible competitors that are considered on par with the men and once they reach that point i think that's when they're gonna that's when they can that's when they're able to kind of take it further if they want it's just to. like the hardest thing is that they're all like that centralized onto one big gold not gold but silver and pink butterfly belt like, <laughs> which hey you know uh you know i mean obviously it's always in the talks but uh, uh obviously it's very rumored after um this whole stuff building to mania this year so who knows mm. but it's- whatever um hey uh, yeah. i, I want to make sure i don't forget this because i feel like if we don't touch on it now i will forget this but uh mainstream matt who writes the the great around the indies column or indie wrestling.us um was very into the, the, the he he insisted that i show this video for our video uh people this is uh brian fury against uh jt dunn in chaotic wrestling uh very literally bringing the house down uh, and taking out part of the ceiling, and and and, and you know we've we've talked about uh, low ceiling issues, and yeah, headbutts the the, the drop ceiling and, and takes them out. And I think he pins them after that too. So um, so just that because uh, of course it's got to be the end of the match. It's got to be the end of the match. If you like, you, you drove the, the your opponent's head through the ceiling. I think you you kind of can't go any further from from that. Uh, again, very multimedia uh, focused over there on the column of RedIndyWrestling.us. Definitely. Uh, and go check that out. I'll mention it again because it gives a rundown of all the events that happened this past weekend. Uh, like Stuart mentioned, includes tweets and, and various videos and photos. Um, thanks to our good friend Matt Carlin for putting that together and uh, uh, getting everyone updated on everything happening in the world of indie wrestling. So I, I just saw that. Does, does he not win after that powerbomb? <laughs> <laughs> he kind of needs to. I, I, yeah, I, I'll need to pull it. Oh, yeah, actually, I, actually. Uh, Hanson, uh, beard, bearded Hanson, apparently of ROH, um, actually beat them. So <laughs> beat both oh. of them in a three-way <laughs> match for the belt. So, All right. or for a number one contender. So never mind. Nobody <laughs> wins. Nobody wins. Not even the venue. Sorry uh. about that. Oh, especially not the venue. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy wrestling. <laughs> Always nice, but, uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, definitely cool stuff happening in the world of indie wrestling this week. Sword, I know you got some stuff coming up. Certainly. Uh, uh in your neck of the woods. Of course, uh, I will be there at RWA as we're discussing off, 
off uh, off they're like hey i will be at rwa so you'll probably get a digital download monday knock on wood <laughs> no promises because we're still working on the last one unfortunately because of timing uh but uh that is life i guess um we are gonna fix this thing where's my mouse there it is uh-oh we got computers breaking uh but no uh, i'm excited to be back there i'll probably be the last time there for for a while due to scheduling conflicts uh but we'll have Sogatron media uh b team uh on hand as usual uh but a march to victory uh, uh i think i pr- this has to be the headline of the show uh but they are going to have and i'll pull up some graphics uh they're going to have a, a pretty cool uh, a return match with um, um, three another three-way of Amazing Red, Sanjay Dutt, and Jason Gorey. Um, killer, killer nice. match they had back in, I believe, October at Bloody Bloody Harvest. Um, and and it just this is this is the level that these guys are at. Uh, they got great talent coming in there, and uh, and a great a great under local not not even local. I know we talked to Memfo Mofo. He's coming in from Nashville. A lot of North Carolina guys. It's not just a spattering of Pittsburgh dudes. Um, and that's really cool, and it's really exciting to see what these guys are doing over there in this little uh, gymnasium in, in West Newton, PA. Um, I, I, they got some really cool stuff. A uh, new champion, Nick Esteban Taylor, that won last month, of course. Um, and, and, and so that's this weekend, but also announced um, RWA and PWX. So, so hey, some cross-promotional situation here in Pittsburgh, which is a uh, um, shocking, to be honest, uh, just announced um, they're going to have a Global Force Wrestling Panic at the Palisades on June 3rd uh, here, just, you know, actually a little closer to Pittsburgh. Um, and, and at least they're calling on the poster. Um, uh, they're going to have Sanjay Dutt, Jeff Jarrett, uh, DJ Z, uh, Colt Cabana, and, 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 uh, and just a smattering of uh, cherry bombs going to be part of this. I don't know if I recognize all the rest of these guys, uh, but uh, I'm excited for that just because. I want to see what what is the involvement for the, these local indie guys at RWA and PWX because um, if that means these guys are working together, um, thank you. Um, I, I I know uh, yeah, Ray, you, I, you know the Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't know it w- was like in Texas in comparison to this. I, I don't think there's anything similar, but we have like uh, what's the last count? Amen, six wrestling promotions in the greater Pittsburgh area. Is that yeah. one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, six wrestling promotions uh, within within an hour's drive of Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, it's a little saturated. Most of them in the South as well. <laughs> Most of them in the South. Actually, no, all of them in Pittsburgh or the South of Pittsburgh. <laughs> an hour south of Pittsburgh. But I, 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 how many, because I know this has always been a problem with you, so no, none in the actual city. Like, uh, one in the actual city that actually does not do any significant video of any sort um that actually did a show three blocks from here in the parking lot for a community days um and and <laughs> and, and 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 actually uh um there's so there's we're so we're in talks for potentially moving the studio someplace and our our new neighbor if this works out will actually the bar mike the barber is actually a kswa i i don't know if he's a retired wrestler but he's definitely very involved uh with the promotion and i saw him do a run-in from his food truck um up here uh so that was like he was serving food and everyone's was like hey this guy's uh the unofficial mayor of beachview beachview is a neighborhood in pittsburgh so there can't be a mayor um so he <laughs> runs in and somebody badmouthed him he ran in from his food truck beat the dude up beat up like two guys and just went back to his food truck and sold some more tacos or whatever the hell you sell it like that my neighborhood is fucking amazing <laughs> This is this is this is so great. Um, but no, no, they're doing fun stuff down there, and and um, actually, they are having something again. Not I don't like to talk about guys that don't have video that you guys can't get to. Is one of the rules of the show, like you guys down in Texas. Uh, but KSWA is actually going to have a show, and I think they're having a little bit of like a Hall of Fame ish show. Uh, and they're going to be talking about some of the studio wrestling stuff uh, here here in town. Um, I think I think they're they're inducting uh, one of the old referees from Studio Wrestling, um, which is of course where Bruno San Martino came from, and a lot of other kind of named guys. Um, so uh, some some good stuff there, good stuff there going on. Uh, wrestling town, I love it. Isn't like the North pretty much always saturated with a bunch of uh, indie wrestling stuff? Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, there's so many cities just close together, and just um, but like even like Cleveland has two promotions right now no not even that i think they have one promotion um they used to have like three or four including one on tv 
Um, but there's, there's scattered all through Ohio. There's one in Erie. Uh, there's there's stuff that runs through Altoona, but I think that's a bigger promotion. Uh, so and and of course around Philly, New Jersey is just can I say lousy with wrestling? Um, <laughs> you know, I don't mean that in a mostly detrimental. Uh, but there's just just everything runs out of there just because it's the Philly area, right? It's yeah, the Philly. It's it's, uh, it's known for that, man. But it's like crammed between like two or three giant metropolitan areas, so of course there's wrestling everywhere. Um, <laughs> so you know, which is great for the guys because they can go do two or three shows without going absolutely insane. So. Um, and again, a lot of these people on these shows are coming up from the Carolinas, Nashville, down from Toronto. I know we get a few guys from over in Michigan, like coming in here to Pittsburgh. So I know, I know from, from the Canadian era is where you get space monkey. So there's that too. There is the space <laughs> monkey. Uh, if you haven't checked them out, go check out the space monkey on YouTube. Uh, we had him for a couple, a uh, couple joints last, uh, last year with the IWC. So, so some good stuff. Um, I think that's everything on my agenda, sir. Yeah, uh, that, that's looking good. Uh, thanks again to Ray for coming on, not just talking with us in the interview, but also joining us for some of the talk after. It's always very cool, uh, uh, cool to have. Uh, not everyone does this, so it's very, it's very, oh, cool, hey. that someone, very cool that someone wants to talk indie, indie wrestling and talk job with us. I have a question, though, real quick. Absolutely. Where is, where is Kaiju Big Battle based out of? Uh, oh, God. Philly-ish. Uh, I had a good conversation with them at the first International Pro Wrestling Day, actually. <laughs> but no, I think they're, <laughs> they are like kind of Philly-ish. Because I know there's okay. some, there is some crossover with Chikara, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was like that's like my first foray into indie wrestling was oh, Kaiju. I got geez. like a DVD in Suncoast, and uh, I was <laughs> oh. I was a kid. I'm like, oh man, like it's a it's a big dinosaur fighting. In all right, room. all right. So <laughs> two two real quick. I, I've told parts of these on the show. I know in the past, but just for you, your your enjoy. But we're at the end of the show. Nobody's gonna listen to this part. Um, <laughs> but I've had two in person Kaiju big battle uh, experiences. Of course, again fighting that DVD back in the day that my friend showed me, like like ten years, ten fifteen years ago, right? Um, saw the Kaiju big battle at the gathering of the Juggalos. A couple years ago. That was amazing. And before that, the first National Pro Wrestling Day, sitting there with the then promoter of the International Wrestling Cartel, because they also had a match featured with the now drifter of, of NXT, Logan Shulo, being a part of that. And then, of course, John McChesney. Um, and just having him just be bewildered by the idea of what the hell he was seeing in the ring. Cause I'm pretty sure they had a sandwich in there wrestling something. Um, and then right beside us was the Kaiju Big Battle merch table with the people behind Kaiju Big Battle, right? And just hearing him trying to understand the concept was a, 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 the best experience because he had he was just... I, he didn't know what to make of it. So, so I remember just one point just like turning around and him saying, so it's not really wrestling, right? It's just <laughs> like... <laughs> No, no, this giant sandwich wrestling this giant can of chicken noodle soup. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, go check it out. It's fun. It's the most, like, if you thought Chikara was out there, Kaiju Big Battle is the the, the fifth dimension of pro wrestling. I, I, know, amazing, it will be, I know it will be in Dallas, uh, WrestleMania weekend. So Kaiju will be in Dallas? Yeah, but by the big, uh, I know WWN Live, their big Ooh. sort of set is doing some stuff and kaiju i think is at like midnight one of the nights so. is the perfect time to watch it because that's when i watched the gathering it was so great <laughs> there better be beer there there has to be beer there are probably more substances uh, i was going to dallas wrestlemania but now i know what i'm really going for <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Awesome to have you on. Great discussion. I think we can have you on again and talk production for an hour. So maybe we'll have to do that. that Dude, thank you, man. Point. I really appreciate you guys having me on. I've had a lot of fun. Not a problem. <laughs> Amen. At Amen to please on the Twitter as well. The voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling with the visuals of Inspire Pro Wrestling Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> and check out my stuff. Uh, Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe. See us here live every uh, Tuesday about 11 p.m. Uh, or so uh, Eastern time. And, uh, and and we'll see you guys next time. Remember, please support some indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.